I love the Word of God. The Word of God has always worked in my life. The Word of God has always worked in my life. Because I have studied and worked the Word. Because I have studied and worked the Word. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you in the precious, holy, righteous, and majestic name of Jesus. Lord, I don't stand in this sacred place on any goodness or merit of my own. But I stand here, Lord, solely because at your appointed time, you called me to this place. I ask you now, Lord God, as the circle is complete, that you will speak a message to your people and speak a message to me that will be a life changing message. And thank Lord God, I sit down and I thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For doing only what you can do. And that wonderful, holy, and righteous name of Jesus, our soul says, Amen. 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 I ask you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Verses 1 through verses 8. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Yes, yes, yes. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Amen. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight, Amen. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will reward award to me on that day. But not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his approaching. Amen. Amen. For those of you who may not know, the writer 
call is at the end of his ministry at this point. Unlike me, he is not simply retiring, but Paul in this text is facing imminent death. At this point in time, he is sitting inside of a prison dungeon awaiting his execution. Now I need to say that again so perhaps it will sink deeper in your mind, but it says at this point in time, he is sitting inside of a prison dungeon awaiting his execution. The one thing that I want you to notice right now about the Apostle Paul is that even though he is at what can be called the worst point in his life, Paul is not sitting around feeling sorry for himself. Amen. He is not sitting around bemoaning his situation. He is not sitting around complaining why me? But I want you to notice where Paul's attention is. Right? Paul is writing a letter to his beloved adopted son, Timothy. And he is giving Timothy his final words of instruction and his final words of encouragement. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to first of all receive from this message that when you are perhaps at the darkest place in your life, you need to be like the Apostle Paul. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? I mean that Paul, even though he was facing death, his attention was centered totally and completely on his Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I want you to understand that the key to handling any kind of situation that you may be going through in life, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's indifferent, no matter what the situation that you are going through in life, you have got to understand that if you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, Amen. you're going to be able to make it through. Yeah. I'll remind you again that Paul is writing his final instructions to somebody that he loves. And this is why the Lord laid on my heart to preach this sermon to you this morning. Because I need to use the words of Paul to be able to express to you my heart's desire for you on this last Sunday that I will preach as your pastor. I want you to understand that the message that God gave through Paul is the message that I, in my hum humanity, my, my physical self, I want you to understand that this is something that I've tried to do in the 24 years of right. my ministry. Yeah. I want you to notice that the first thing that God, through Paul, tells Timothy and us is to preach the word. Now I need to stop there for a moment because I'm going to try and get you to understand some things and then I'm going to flip the script on you a little bit. But I want you to understand why it is that I have preached so hard and why it is that I have been so stern and so dogmatic about staying on the word and on the word only is because God's instruction in the word is to preach the word. Amen. He does not say preach a social watered down gospel. He does not say preach a, a political gospel. He does not say preach something that is going to satisfy what people want to hear, but he says preach the, the word. word. The word. Thank you, Jesus. In Christ, I don't know if you noticed in this text, but when it says preach the word, it is saying because of your Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. He is watching you. 
Thank to you, see Lord. if you're going to do what he has instructed you to do. So this is what God called me to do. God called me to preach the word. And then he said, Joanne, not only are you to preach the word, but he said, you're to preach the word in season yes. and out of season. Amen. That means that you've got to preach the word when the people want to hear it. And when they don't want to hear it. Don't hear Amen. That means you've got to preach the word when people, your people like you and, and when, when they he... decide they don't like you Amen. and want to walk out the door. Amen. God said you've got to preach the word in season. We know in life that there's all kind of seasons that we go through. We know that God tells us in Ecclesiastes that there's a season, there's a time for everything. So God is saying to us, he is saying to each and every one of us here that the uh, uh, commission that he gave me was to preach the word. Yes. No matter what it is that I was going through. I've been in Beachville Church for 15 years. I have buried my father here. I have buried my son here. I have buried my family's son here. I have married some people. I've had joys and I've had sorrows, but God said no matter what the season was, to continue preaching the pure on the dog. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, preach the word. Yes. But I want you to understand that not only did he say preach the word, but he says correct the people. Yes. Yes. Y'all didn't like me for that. Yes. Some yes. of y'all went out of here with attitudes, and some left with attitudes are still gone. But God said to correct you with the word. Amen. Not to correct you with what I thought, right. but what I felt. But to correct you to line your life up with, with the Christ. word of Almighty God. Amen. I would not be worth squat if I just preached to you and allowed you to live in your mess and not allow the Holy Spirit to cause a change in your life. Amen. I would not be worth Amen. Amen. Being Hallelujah. God says, I gotta correct you. Just like a parent worth their soul. Yes. It's going to correct their child. Sometimes I'm going to have to correct you, and you're not going to like it. You're going to come up with all kinds of excuses. You're going to say, well, what about you? You think you're that? It's not about that. It's about doing what the Word of God, God says. says. And then the next thing he says is not only do I want you to correct them, but I want you to rebuke them. Yeah. Well, honey, we, we know about rebuking the devil, don't we? Yes. Haven't you been taught that? Yes. Does God say, yes. rebuke whatever you rebuke on earth is rebuked in heaven, whatever yes. you bind on earth yeah. is bound in heaven. God says you got to teach them how to rebuke that spirit that is inside of people that make them walk around doing and saying things that they don't have any business doing. you got to rebuke them and rebuke the spirit that is inside of them. I can see spirits inside of people. Amen. I can feel spirits inside of them. Amen. And the closer you get to God, the more that will be manifested in your life and you will not be able to do what God is calling you to do when there are certain kind of spirits in your midst. You got to rebuke them and bind them and cast them out. God said, Joanne, I want you to preach the word, but I don't want you to preach the word to make them jump up and down and shout because a shout ain't going to take you nowhere. A shout's going to make you feel good for the moment, but when you go home and Satan starts kicking your butt up one side and the other, that shout ain't going to do you no good. It's only as you are grounded in the word. Preach the word. Correct. Correct. Correct people when they're wrong. Tell them you're living together and you're living in sin. You need to get your life set up with God. Amen. Correct them. Tell them the mess of us be out here having sex outside of marriage. Correct them. Tell them that God said a man is not to lay with a man and a woman's not to lay with a woman. Correct them. Yes, hallelujah. Rebuke them. Correct them. But God says in the midst of that, make and sure encourage. you encourage them. Amen. Don't beat them up so much that they feel like that there's no help and no hope. Amen. Let them know that, yes, what they're doing may be wrong, 
But the God that you serve is such a loving God that he will make that change inside of yes. you and turn your yes. life around. Yes. God says, preach the word only, correct, <coughs> rebuke, encourage. And then Paul goes on to say that we are to endure hardships. I've had to endure some time here. I've had some nights of laying in my bed crying and wondering why this and why that. But God says, Joanne, don't you dare throw up your hands because this is not your ministry. This is my ministry. I'm simply using you as a vessel to be able to teach my people what I have them here. Endure your hardship. He says, do the work of an evangelist. What's the work of an evangelist? Teaching people about saving knowledge of Jesus the Christ. And then I want you to notice what he ends with. He says, because the time of my departure is at hand. I finished the race. I fought a good fight. And I have finished the race. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the time of my departure is here. And I fought a good fight. And I finished the race. But I want you to understand that God is telling you this morning that not only is this message that he has here in 2 Timothy for me, but this message here is for each and every Amen. one of you. Amen. I want you to understand that yes, it's been a struggle. There's been times of trial, there's been times of pain, but it's been more, more times of joy Amen. than all of those things put Amen. together. Amen. And I praise God for that. Amen. So God is getting ready to send you a new pastor. And I want you to understand whether the pastor is me or whether the pastor is Valerie Barnes, you don't serve either one of us. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Yeah. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, and I know I've had. I know I've finished, and the thing is, I've finished what God called me to do. And brothers and sisters in Christ, there's no better feeling than to know Amen. that you've done what God has called. Now, I'm not saying he's finished with me, period, but I'm talking about in this particular place. Amen. And whenever God gives you an assignment to do, whether it's on your job, whether it's in your home, whether it's anywhere else, make sure that you leave the people wanting more. Amen. Make, do you understand what I'm saying? Don't leave have it be an end and people say, oh, I'm glad that person is gone. Do you know what I mean? You leave them wanting more, wanting more of you. That's the way you do the ministry that God has called you Amen. to do. Amen. Whether it's with me or someone else. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 12 through 13. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? What is he saying here? He is saying that people are going around and they are classifying themselves. Well, I sit under Reverend uh, uh, Thomas and I sit under Reverend Sing Sun Moon and I sit under Reverend Joe Blow and it's like you're serving all these different pastors. God said, is Christ divided? Did Pastor Harry, when I leave here, if y'all going to let everything fall apart, did I get up on a cross and die for you? Did I die for you? Did I? No, I didn't. Did I pay the penalty for your sins? No. It doesn't matter if it's me here or Reverend Barnes here. As long as the pure 
those people pay the penalty for your sins? When did they? I want you all to understand that I'm getting ready to flip it for a minute and then I'm going to close. I want you to understand that churches, I'm so tired, and, and I guess the Lord, whatever, but I'm so tired of churches competing with one another. Amen. You know why we can't save more souls and make more difference in Baltimore, Maryland? Because the churches are competing with one another. How can we compete against one another when we have the same cause? Amen. And that's the cause of our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus the Christ. It doesn't matter who is here. I have come and I've done my work. But it's time for my departure. My departure is at hand. But God told me to tell you that the very words, the very charge that he gave to me 24 years ago is the same charge that he's given to each and every one of you Amen. right now. Amen. And he's saying to you, preach the word. You say, Pasha, I'm not a preacher. That may be true. But he wants me to change one word and says, witness to the word. Amen. He says, what he wants you to do is you have got to take the same charge. When you give a charge to someone, that's a responsibility. Beachville Church, I charge you. I charge you this day to teach and share with people all of the word that God has given to you in this place in the last 15 years. I charge you to go out and share the word. To share the word when people want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it. Don't throw up your hands and say, I done talked to him or her over and over again and it hasn't done any good. God said, share the word. When they want to hear it, when they don't want to hear it. Amen. God said, witness. Share the word when it's convenient for you and when it's not convenient. Oh, honey, I wish I could open up your head and put that in there. Because we're always thinking about how convenient something. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. God said to remind you that just when, as he gave me that charge and the uh, incentive was the fact that God was watching me. It's the same thing that he is watching now. And he is seeing me transfer that charge to you. For you to preach the word. For you to talk about Christ in season and out of season. For you to share your faith when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. And for you to live the life that God has called you to. So that one day you're going to be able to stand and say, I have fought a good fight. Amen. I have finished the race. And now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Yes. But notice the scripture says that righteousness, the crown of righteousness, it is not just for me, but it's for all of those who long for his appearing. Yes. I long for his appearing. I was standing up here this morning praying, and I told the Lord, I said, you can take me right now if you want. But then he said, that wouldn't be fair to y'all because it would have been too upsetting to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, that's just how I felt. You can take me right now. But he says, it's not the best thing for you. Remember, Paul says, I'm betwixt and between whether to leave this body and go and be with God or to stay here and continue teaching you. I can now identify with what that great man of God was saying. Amen. Amen. You have a charge to keep. Whether pastor is here or anyone else is here. Because the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ is so near. Amen. Amen. Let me share something with you and I'll, fin I'll finish the sermon. Everybody knows where the book of Revelation is on Saturday. And I can't remember where we were. But it's talking about when uh, Christ, um, God took the... Uh, he took the censer and filled it with fire and threw it down to the earth and a third of the trees and things were burned up and so on and so forth and all these people died. And I told him something I saw on the news on Thursday, Friday. Maybe one of y'all saw it. Do you know what the latest invention
invention is, uh, like electronic invention, like the uh, uh, computer and all. You know what the latest thing is? Yeah. No. Class. <laughs> <laughs> they have now created a machine, a computer of some type, that they can put in the coffin with the body, and then the person that died that you love, you can talk to them after they're gone. You can hear them talking and they can talk to you. That's what it's supposed to be, communication, yes. You can hear them talking and they'll be able to talk. This is the latest technological breakthrough. <laughs> now see, I showed you that it, sometimes I, it, I could just spit. Because that just shows you that you all are not grasping what the word, this is showing that Satan is so busy yes, in trying to get people involved in the occult. Yes, he is. In the occult. Yep. Talking to dead and demonic yep. skin. Yep. Do you believe that once they put this, this instrument in, that he will not have his demons talking through these things, making these people believe that it is their dead loved ones talking to them? This is one of the things that was in the book of Revelation just today that we were tied. And I'm trying to show you how close the return of Christ is. Amen. So the charge Amen. that I'm giving you today, Amen. I'm not giving you this charge simply to pass the time. But I'm giving it to you because the return of Christ is not. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, we come to you with the precious Holy and righteous name of Jesus, Lord God, you did it. You did it. And I thank you. I thank you. Because, Lord, I wanted this to be God glorifying. Yes, Lord. To touch people's heart, to just want to draw closer to you. And I hope and pray that that was accomplished. I don't want it all to be about me. Lord, I want them to understand that you are the head of this church. We are simply the body. The body can't operate without a head. And they're not going to be able to run this church without you. Amen. I ask you to bless the new pastor that yes, is coming in. Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I ask you to anoint her, Lord. Yes. I've been praying this for five years, not even knowing who she was. But Lord God, I ask you to just move in the way only you can do. We love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Lord. Jesus, my soul says amen. amen. You stand, please, my surrender. I chose this song intentionally. Amen. Amen. Because that's what I want from y'all this day. I want you to surrender all. You can turn it off.